I think that we operate a structure determined entity. This means that at any moment we do the only thing that we can do. You ask me a question and I give you an answer, and it's the only answer I can give to you. Now, in the process of giving the answer, we human beings are listening to the answer that we're giving. So we are changing the situation completely in the process, and I may think, aha, I could have given this other answer. But since I find myself giving an answer, and I do not see how my answer comes, I may find myself surprised or not by it. If I am in comfort with it, I just give it, I have no further reflection. If you ask me why did you give that answer, I may provide you an argument for a choice. But in the long run, what is happening is that I have given you the only answer I could give in that moment. So in the strict sense, choice is not there. Yet as a commentary of my reflection upon what I do, choice is there. You've been talking about what happened. What happened in the past. Well, this we can do, of course, and we do. As, uh, again, as a reflection on our present. We today behave as if we could not understand this future. Although it is the only thing we should understand. The past is past. The present patterns anyway. And understanding and agreement has to be given to false statements. We talk about the future. Well, the future, if we talk about the future, in fact, we're talking about the computation of transformations from the present into the future. You see, I claim that we living systems exist in the present. In fact, the whole existence is in the present. Now, we have this ability, because we exist in language, of operating in such a way that we can talk about our being now and make explanation about how are we in the present, and this is a history, or computations about what could be transformations from this present, and we call this the future. Your present changes, your past changes. Your present changes, your future changes. The Big Bang is a manner of being now with the understanding of now with respect to how we live now. So you compute the Big Bang as a historical argument for the rest. Now, this is not trivial. This is not trivial. Because, and this is an explanation, of course, because as we do this, we are changing in this dynamics so that we are changing according to how we are explaining our present explaining our history. And that is, I think, the position we're always in in regard to language. That we're in language all the time. And when I was writing a thesis about language, some people were saying, you, you cannot describe natural language because it is its own meta-language. So Russell Paradox was being enforced to tell me that I could not describe what I was doing. The notion of description was coming along, telling me that what I and everybody here finds we're doing all the time is not allowed or is not allowed as quotes description. Um, and that is very nicely preempted by that statement of the problem at the beginning of the century that consciousness is continuous. And as soon as there's a subconscious that we can translate, we put all the attention there. So every time there is something we can talk about, all the attention goes there. And we cannot, because we're in it all the time, it is very difficult to reflect on what I am talking about doing it now. Now, when? When? The predicament of self-reference is that I am continuously reflecting on what I'm doing, whether I make it explicit or not. All these levels, allegedly regressive levels, are not regressive because where I actually am is where I actually am. I am in the present. I was in the future. I shall be in the past. So when is violence? When? 
What is violence is one thing, and we talk all the time inadvertently or advertently about whether we know what violence is. I insist that we do not know what violence is, but we know when violence is. Violence is then when somebody says so. 